Thank you for watching Digging to China, I'm Dong Xiong. If you have not done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Today, I continue the discussion on food safety, focusing on another critical aspect. In my last program, I highlighted the initial challenges within China's food supply. However, the complexities extend further during the food processing stage, particularly due to the diverse array of food types and the, the various methods employed. For the sake of brevity, I'll narrow our focus to a pre uh, prevalent issue, food additives, which are more accurately described as chemical food additives. Do additives include a natural ingredient? Yes, but their primary effect stems from their chemical composition. The distinctive operational approach of Chinese food companies differing greatly from that of developed nations has resulted in almost all of these enterprises exploiting regulatory gaps established by the country's laws and regulations. This exploitation of various openings and vulnerabilities enabled them to potentially deceive the broader Chinese population within the bounds of what is considered reasonable and lawful. The approach to food processing varies between Eastern and Western cultures. Large food processing companies maintain their own labs, and their research, prioritize shared, uh, and their research priorities shed light on this distinction. In Western food facilities, the primary focus is on ensuring health throughout the entire, entire journey from sourcing to consumption. Additionally, factors such as taste, storage, transportation, and profitability are given importance. Consumers play a vital role by offering health feedback or and building reputation for these enterprises. Even though Western government bodies have established numerous food safety standards, these guidelines primarily serve to caution food companies against exceeding certain limits. Nevertheless, these companies take precaution to avoid approaching the limits set by these standards in their manufacturing process. Their main focus is on ensuring health, safeguarding their reputation and responding to feedback from society. Any issues that arise can significantly impact their reputation and brand. When Western consumers purchase food products, their top priority is health, followed by taste and then price. For example, in some American supermarkets, a dozen eggs could cost just a dollar, while another dozen on a higher shelf uh, might be priced at $10. Despite both being eggs with no discernible taste difference, variations in the health and upbringing conditions of the hens led to the, uh, lead to the price discrepancy. However, the situation in China is quite different. Within the labs of Chinese food companies, the primary focus is on researching the application of various chemical regions and the food additives to achieve the best taste at the lowest cost, all while staying within legal boundaries. The emphasis at the emphasis on achieving an optimal taste with minimal expense often overshadows concerns about the potential health implications for consumers, especially when these practices align with national standards and regulations. These chemical additives not only enhance flavor but also prolong the shelf life for food products. In the absence of such additives, costs rise and the shelf life decrease. Consequently, under the condition of adhering to national standards, there is a tendency to maximize the use of food additives, ensuring favorable taste, prolonged freshness, and cost effectiveness, ultimately leading to lower price. Hence, the fundamental intentions of food processing companies in China and the developed Western nations diverge significantly. In China, the focus for all food enterprises revolves around a race to incorporate an array of food additives, a necessity shaped by Chinese consumer preference prioritizing taste and affordability over health considerations which often remain less perceptible. Given the paramount importance of cost effectiveness in the Chinese market, enterprises find themselves competing in a landscape where widespread utilization of food additives has become a norm. This approach ensures enhanced taste, reduced cost, and a prolonged shelf life. Opting not to adopt such additives places a company at a competitive disadvantage across all dimensions. Therefore, 
The prevailing strategy is to embrace additives, provided they remain within the confines of national regulatory limits. In this context, the existing food safety standards formulated according to Chinese dietary norms reveal significant deficiencies. All food processing companies solely verify compliance with national standards and the types and amounts of additives within permissible limits. Yet, they fail to communicate to consumers the potential implications of abstaining from or reducing additives usage on health, omitting crucial information. While such transparency might not be as imperative in Western societies where health takes precedence throughout the supply chain, in China, cost effectiveness holds greater priority. Consequently, the food enterprises that manage to thrive in China have become prominent users of food chemical additives. Let's take the example of trans fat to illustrate. It's widely known that trans fat pose health risks. While the Chinese government has established the standards for the permissible amount of trans fats, our everyday choices can lead to unintended consequences. Individually, each food item may meet the trans fat limit. But when we add up the trans fats from things like a creamer in coffee, western pastries, potato chips, and even bubble milk tea, the cumulative intake far exceeds the recommended limit. Trans fats have a metabolic cycle of over 50 days in the human body. If they cannot be metabolized and instead accumulate, they can contribute to the emergence of various health issues. Based on existing research and studies, China's utilization of food additives in various food categories surpassed that of both developing and developed nations. Think about everyday condiments like soy sauce, MSG, chicken essence, and vinegar, all containing additives meeting the highest standard. Can China individuals truly escape the impact of these additives? Regrettably, they cannot, due to existing loopholes often exploited in the country. With the regulations in place, gaps inevitably emerge. In a nation lacking strong moral, ethical, and legal foundations, rectifying these gaps remains a formidable task. There is a story I came across about a young woman who spent four years in college and had a strong liking for milk tea, consuming it daily. Upon graduation, she secured a job, and during the onboarding process, she drank a cup of black tea offered by the company. The next day, her health deteriorated drastically, leading to a hospitalization. Medical examinations unveiled a severe allergy to T. polyphenols due to her body's constitution. It's important to note that various types of tea, whether black, green, poor, are, or white, containing T. polyphenols. But here is the catch. How could she have consumed milk tea for four years without any reaction? The truth is, her milk tea didn't actually contain any real tea. It was primarily composed of chemical additives designed to mimic the tea flavor. If her milk tea had genuinely contained the tea, she would have discovered her tea polyphenols allergy from the very first cup she consumed four years earlier. This story sheds light on the current state of food in China. What is the cause behind China's staggering statistics? 330 million cardiovascular disease patients, a cancer diagnosis rate quadrupled the global standard. A 50-fold increase in gestational diabetes during pregnancy over the past 20 years, a continuous decline in the average vision of its youth, and a startling 167% decrease in the physical fitness of Chinese youth and children from 1995 to 2020. These numbers raise questions. The answer might become clear now. Due to the serious effectiveness initiated by the CCP starting from agriculture practice that result in pollution of air and water, extending to the widespread misuse of different medications and the progressing through various processing stages, all the way to the utilization of additives in the food industry, not instill a sense of apprehension, it appears that as long as the current governance approach by the Communist Party remains unaltered, the challenge of ensuring food safety in China will persist. 
The health trajectory of Chinese individuals diverged from that of Western counterparts. Even if a Chinese individual attains a lifespan of 90 years, they might encounter diverse health issues in their 40s or 50s, necessitating reliance on medications for sustenance. In contrast, Western populations often manage to uphold good health throughout their entire lives. While this perspective is mine, it is essential to acknowledge the insights of other experts. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment and a subscribe to my channel. Just click the subscribe button right here. I'll see you again shortly. Until then, be well.